Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am Moltrap. With me here is Kaldor, and welcome to the GSL Code A. This is the round of 24. Sorry about that, adjusting my sound settings down there. Uh, this is the final round of Code A for the season. Again, we have a new format this season, so uh, if you're not familiar with it, basically, we've got three rounds, and as you go higher and higher up, you're getting closer and closer to Code S. So what does that mean for today? It means that today, if you win today, you are in Code S. That's what it comes down to. This is extremely important. The losers of today's matches go into the up and down matches, so they're not out completely, but everyone's going to be trying their hardest because Code S is the true prize of Code A, and some of these players were in Code S this season. They're trying to get back in, so um, I think we're going to be uh, looking forward to some exciting matches today. What do you think, Keldor? I'm actually really looking forward to that. We have some awesome matches, Bomba versus MC being one of them. That's one of the games that I really look forward to. But we have some uh, other games that are really exciting as well. We have Parting against Killer. This is going to be a PvP. And I have to admit, before this season, I have never heard of Parting. I've been able to cast some of his games that he played against OGS Top. And mm. I was quite impressed. That guy has such a good PvP, it's incredible. Yeah. And today, we'll see if his PvP is good as well. He might be able to play Code S next season, and Killer definitely wants to win those games as well go back to code s yeah we uh yeah he beat uh top and he also beat clyde if i remember correctly so he definitely has good yep. pvt he won with 2-0 against clyde yeah and so uh he's gonna have his uh we're gonna see if he can do the same thing with a strong protoss player he's beaten some former code s terrans can he beat a former code s protoss and killer killer the final toss the Last Protoss left in the round of 16 last season, and uh, here he is trying to fight to stay in Code S or get back into it, I guess, would be the way you to look at it. And here is the brackets, by the way, that are coming up later on this week. Uh, I'm sorry, wait. This is... No, these are just part of the brackets. I'm sorry. These are one of the matches going on today. Brown versus Lucera. That's later. Uh, ASD versus Nesty is going on later. Harding versus Killer. So we're just talking about Cezanne versus Happy. And July versus Finn is going on, I believe, tomorrow. Bomber versus MC is today. Lucky versus Ganji is going to be later in the week. And Dongregu versus Teja, I believe, is also tomorrow. And I just want to take the chance to talk a little bit about Happy against Cezanne. I was preparing those matches earlier and looked up some statistics of the players. I had the chance of casting Happy, I think it was just yesterday in a TVZ. Oh, yeah? And uh, the thing is... I looked up those statistics he and just I was just, lose him. I just was blown away. Yeah. That guy didn't lose a game against Zerg in ages. I actually wrote it down and the last 10 games, last 10 games that he played against Zerg, he didn't lose a single map. Yeah, he's something like 25 and 4 or something ridiculous. I, I don't remember, I didn't look it up yet today, but uh, the last time I looked it up, I was amazed as well by his record. Here's today's matches, by the way, in case you didn't catch them. So we went through all the matches for the week at once. And by the way, if you noticed that um, Curious gets a straight into Code S because his, the person he was going to be going up against was uh, a guy who ended up withdrawing from the tournament. Coca forfeit his spot in Code S. And so there was a little bit of drama in. going on. A little bit of drama there. Yeah, in another tournament where the winner of the tournament was able to get into Code A. There was a little bit of shenaniganry going on, and it was uh, very illegal, and so everyone was kicked out that was involved. So as that happened, cleaned up a spot, cleared up a spot for Coca there to get in. I'm sorry, not for Coca. Coca was out. Curious is going to get in. Uh, but here is our new Protoss player, Parting. First time in the GSL, and he's uh, doing very well. Haven't seen anything from him. Oh, and even in other tournaments in a while. Uh, his PVT is just great. I was really amazed by that. Those games, well, when I started to cast the games, and usually when you, st when you approach a game and you have one of the players that's really unknown, and the other one is like OGS Top, that might have not been able to perform that well lately, but it's still a name that you definitely recognize. You think yeah. like, okay, we have a favorite player. And uh, Harding just took him apart, and it was amazing. His PVT was so good, and that's why I'm really looking forward to his PVP. I want to see if he's able to do well against Killer. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that as well, seeing if he can bring it up. Because, I mean, sometimes players do have 
just one matchup, that they're just really good at that one matchup and they're bad at others, or sometimes they're all around good players. And here's his opponent. Killer, who just left his team, he left TSL, yeah. so this is going to be quite exciting too. And I talked to him a little bit before the matches when we were backstage and uh, asked him if he is confident that he's going to win and he was there, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, win today, win today. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a pretty cool guy, his English is, ex is actually quite decent, uh, he speaks some good English and yeah. he understands a lot as well. So um, He used to play on Eastro and he hung out with, he lived with Artosis for a while and picked up some English from him. He used to be known as Song Ho, because his name is Shin Song Ho. So he went from having the most generic name ever by naming his actual name, his ID, to having the second most generic name ever, calling himself Killer. I think there's like five different killers in professional StarCraft nowadays, but uh... The only thing that's missing right now is MC anyway. changing his ID to something like Nightmare or Shadow Killer or... <laughs> I guess, I guess there have been some even more generic names in the past, like Zerg, or you know, Zerg Boy was a Brood War player. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're gonna get started with game number one, Killer versus the slightly less generic Parting. We're gonna find out which Protoss is going to make it into Codas. First map is Antigua Shipyards. Let's get into game number one here at the GSL. All right. And uh, here is our Protoss player in the bottom left of Antigua. Bomber Happy just got in the building. They are not. They're not parting. They've just arrived. There's parting. Ooh, he's fast. Spamming it up. Already at the beginning. And at the top right of the map, we have his opponent in the blue colors. We have the player that just recently left his team. This is. That was the most boring killer that I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, I'd actually, I don't, actually, I'm not sure if it went through on the uh, English stream. So that was killer, you guys. Sorry about that. I should have uh, done my Street Fighter impersonation. I will do that next time around. But uh, look at the winner prediction here. Most people thinking that killer is going to win, but parting, you know, often when the no-name player comes in, they've got like 12%. On, yep. their, on their winner predictions, but this guy has almost 30% actually, so he must have impressed a lot of our viewers as well. I actually watched an interview with Maus Hazorps, a very good European Protoss player, and he was talking about his performance in some other leagues, and especially about the PvP matchup, and he thinks that Protoss versus Protoss kind of favors the um, the worst player, because he's on the opinion that the matchup right now is just so fragile that as the up-and-coming player, you have a lot of a better chance defeating a good player due to the fragility of the matchup itself. Huh. And that's actually something uh, that I definitely can agree with. He has stated that when he was facing uh, Liquid Hero, so where he himself no knew that his opponent would probably have an uh, advantage in the game. So uh, it's actually kind of an uh, interesting way of looking at it. You, is that because the, the worst player is going to do things that are unexpected? Is that why they have the advantage? Um, it's basically because the matchup is really, really fragile. There are a lot of ways where you can uh, get a build order win or uh, a small mistake oh, yeah, yeah, and uh, just tip the scale in your favor. So that's a matchup which is uh, a lot less unforgiving for the better player. If you make a mistake, you can't see, come back So, into so the not match. that the Worst player is more likely to win, but they're more, no, no. Likely, more likely to win than in, than in other matches. Exactly. Okay, exactly. I understand. No, that's that's actually a really good point. And I've heard I've heard that as well. That a lot of people are kind of frustrated with that. Oftentimes, ZVZers dislike Zerg versus Zerg for similar reasons. Exactly. Not, not quite as volatile, but still very volatile. Uh, by the way, both players just doing pretty similar builds here, but a little bit of variation. Killers actually picked up his second gas a little bit quicker uh, than Parting has. And uh, it doesn't look like anything too much is different quite at the moment. Parting is actually cutting probes right now. So he's on 20 oh, probes okay. and uh, this is looking like your standard foregate that he is going to do. He's not building any additional probes oh, while we have Killer 
with already 22 of them. He's cutting at 22 and those small differences in the probe count in the early stage of the game that will eventually add oh. up over the course of the match itself. So this is kind of important to note. Both players trading zealots. Yeah, he actually, this is interesting, parting, he did cut probes and he's only getting three gateways though and there's the Twilight Council so he's going to go three gate blink stalkers and he actually got his second gas, showed that to Killer's probe and didn't mine from it once he got the probe out of there. So very tricky play here making him think that he was going for a tech build. Both players already have that warp in pollen. We just saw the pollen for Killer. There's another one for Parting at the upper end of the map. And it's kind of important to note that Killer, this is actually his worst matchup. Yeah. He's really, really bad in PvP when it comes down to his uh, last matches. He has only 29% win quota. He lost 12 matches, was only able to decide 5 in his favor. And he lost against Oz. In, code, uh, in the GSL as well, he lost to Atero, he lost to Soccer. so the last games that he played in this matchup really didn't end in his favor. Parting on the other hand, he is very unknown, he has a great PvT, but how good is PvP, is that something we'll see today? Yeah, no, you're right, Song has had a lot of trouble with PvP in the past. I remember actually that, uh, what, hold that thought, never mind, don't hold that thought, because Thought a big attack was about to happen, but he actually cancels that pylon and just goes ahead and goes home. Wasn't able to proceed with that. I remember, um, yeah, Killer, like, he he had a bad record versus Protoss. I remember Huck had an even worse record versus Protoss, and everyone was like, oh my gosh, Huck is so bad at PvP. And they met, and I was like, wow, maybe Killer's actually going to win a PvP because Huck is just not that good at that matchup. And that was when Huck just decided to stop being bad at it and become one of the best PvPers in, in the game. And so, like, the one chance that Killer had against the player with the worst record, he still got stomped. So, he's just had really bad luck with PvP in the past. And uh, he's not horrible at it. He doesn't make a ton of mistakes or anything like that. But he just can't quite beat the level of players that he's playing against. Right now the match is getting pretty interesting by the way. We have Bling about to finish for Parting. Killer is getting a Twilight Council himself, has finished his Robo. Parting is getting one as well, but Killer is way ahead in probes right now. He's on 29 against 23. The stock account is even for both players. And now Parting is trying to get a little bit more aggressive, is actually walking around the map looking for the pile and sees the warp in pile for Killer, will kill that immediately and blocking his opponent in terms of supply. So this is going to be quite interesting. Parting needs to deal some damage. If he lets that game continue at the Pope count he is right now, Killer will get a major advantage in terms of his army supply. Yeah, definitely. Although uh, that uh, advantage in probes doesn't give you as much of an econ lead as you might expect because past like 24 probes on one base, you're not actually getting a lot out of those extra probes because they're not able to mine efficiently. They do give you a little bit extra, but the returns are very diminishing at that point. But it looks like Parting is going to put on some pressure. He did get that robo, and he is now sending an observer over that way. Killer has an observer out already, so we might see a little a bit of observer struggles go on. But he Parting can use... In. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. You were go about ahead. to say I was about to say it, but you... Uh. Go ahead. Go ahead, then. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, Moltra was about to say, sorry that I put it in like that, but that Observer will obviously give him uh, the vision on the high ground and therefore he will be able to blink in. But Killer is ready for that. Killer has 16, 16 Stalker, 17 now against 50, against 15, and this is not going to work in Parting's favor if he actually decides to blink on the high ground. He blinks in with one of his Stalkers, try to draw the attention of Killer back. Oh, oh. Blink. Killer using using his own blink, but Parting, realizing that his opponent has way more stalkers than he expected, is actually backing off now. That was actually really cute. It was very clever. Look at that. He sent in one stalker in the back to see what was going on. Oh no, this could be very bad for Parting. He does have a good concave though. Killer not getting as many of his stalkers firing, even though he did have more stalkers. And it's blink versus blink, so neither one will have the blink advantage. Yeah, but Killer warping in another round is going to have the advantage here. And this time he does have the concave, so Parting forced to fall back down that ramp. Is probably gonna have to withdraw here. Just a little bit of cat and mouse going on, but who's the cat and who's the mouse? We have four gates still for Killer, so he is in a pretty decent position with this barrack, uh, with this advanced in economy and blinking in. Killer immediately oh, wow. trying to confront his opponent. Killer is supply block right now. He can't warp in additional stalkers, and now there's a micro battle going on. Both of these players trying to save their stalkers with the blink ability. Oh, oh party with the mistake. Missed blink. Oh. Wow, tried to blink all the stalkers out, but he was too 
far from the edge. And so some of his stalkers stayed on the high ground to die. And that was pretty bad. Neither player expanding here. It looks like Killer was planning on expanding. That gets shut down. A little bit more of a skirmish here. And this time Killer has a lot of stalkers up on the high ground, not firing. The Blink Micro is letting that not be too much of an effect though. And as Party tries to withdraw, Killer follows with his own Blink and picks off a ton of stalkers for free. Wow. Despite the Miss Micro by Killer, Voltra mentioned already that some of the stalkers were trapped on the high ground, weren't able to fire at his opponent's units, but still he was able to come out ahead in this game. 9 to 13 stalkers, the count. Party is only on 9 stalkers. He has one Zealot on the map as well, wow. but with the lead in economy and expansion that Killer is now trying to get, he is looking better and better in this match. Parting is definitely behind. He needs to pull some ace out of his sleeve if he wants to stay in that game. Yeah, yeah, he's he's pretty far behind. He's going to expand as well, but Killer can have that expansion a lot more safe, uh, more safely than Parting can because he's got the advantage. He knows he has the advantage. He knows he's killed more Parting stalkers, and I like how he's just he's camping his stalkers in his main base because the, that's the only way that Parting could get back in this is if Killer moved out and Party blinked in and took out some structures and blinked out, did a little harassment like that, he could get back in the game. Killer knows as long as he defends, gets that economy going a little bit better, gets those two bases up, you can just pump out a lot more units and, and win in the long run. Party is trying to get a bunch of Immortals in order to deal with the stock account of his opponent, but right now we have Killer with 21 stalkers against 10. He's doubling the stock account of Party, and that is really something. Now taking out the pylons that have been um, built all over the map. The expansion is about to finish. He will transfer some of his probes over to his second base and then try to actually deny Parting's natural expansion. So very well played by Killer so far. He needs to be able to deal with the Immortal, but this is looking really good from uh, the former TSL player. Yeah, he's just gonna stomp on him here in a moment, I think, because he's like, alright, well, you know what? Uh, I had more Stalkers than you, and then you built a Nexus, which means you have three or four less Stalkers Warped in also, that means I have so many more stalkers than you, it's just ridiculous. I'm just gonna put some pressure on you, try and uh, kill some stuff, maybe even kill your expansion or at least force you to put all, uh, t take a lot of pressure, maybe kill some probes. And this is all he needs to do because Killer now can just ride that big economy. Killer's been pumping out probes from both of his nexuses, he's now up to 37 probes to the 20 some odd, 29 I think. Can't read it on my monitor. 26. 26 of parting. So now with that second base, the extra probes will matter, and Killer's going to be able to pump out so many more units. Killer's doing a really good job at uh, looking for those pylons, and uh, parting is losing another yeah. one of them. He's trying to warp in a zealot into and run into the economy of his opponent, kill some of the probes. But that's not going to happen, and with a lead of 10 probes, 15 stalkers right now. Killer is just in a demanding position and he's not over committing to some kind of an attack. He's just taking it easy now. He knows that he has a huge advantage, that he only needs to wait a little bit longer, get his economy going and get further ahead in the game in order to decide that first map in his favor. Nice decision making by Killer and uh, in total supply he's already had with 30 supply. Yeah, and that was the reason why he's trying to hunt down all these pylons, by the way, because he doesn't want in the middle of killing oh. Parting's main base, he doesn't want Zealous to run into his expansion. What's going on? I thought he might blink into his opponent's main base, but as soon as the Observer okay. arrived, he actually uh, went to, uh, to have another poke at the main entrance. Yeah, he's uh, going for the robotic support bay, getting a forge as well. I like that move. He knows his opponent has uh, you know, the Twilight Council. And in a place like this, where you're behind, that's when you go DTs oftentimes, so it makes a ton of sense to get a forge. You know what? If you're ahead, be safe. Get a cannon in your main and your natural, so that way you can move out and not have to worry about your observers being out of position and your, all your probes dying to one Dark Templar, that kind of thing. And uh, just look at this, hunting around for pylons again, possibly trying to kill off that observer. And uh, yeah, just killer. He's just going to build up a little bit, probably go with a couple Colossus and Thermal Lance and just, just roll him. He will go for a timing attack now. He will either decide to uh, start after a certain upgrade has been done, like for example extended Thermal Lance and rely on his higher Colossus count, or he will just try to max out and then attack his opponent. Because right now he's still ahead, but he needs to make sure that he is uh, attacking 
to a certain timing, either the maxed out army or a certain attack upgrade like extended thermal lens. If he doesn't do that, he gives his opponent a chance to max out as well, and then it will come down to the micro and the fight later on. That's something that Killer tr wants to avoid right now. He might even... Oh, he actually is. He's actually expanding again, taking that third, will scout his opponent, try to have a poke when he's going to take a third base as well and might be able to deny that. But so far, the decision making by Killer after getting ahead in the early game was really, really well good. Yeah, I mean, that's what you gotta do. If, if you have the superior army, but you can't quite break them in their defensive position, that's what you have to do, is just expand again, and uh, get the econ advantage, and then wait until you have an overwhelming superiority. And uh, that's, oh, Parting blinking away, does not want to engage there. Trying to get a little bit of map presence. It's kind of cute, picking off that probe in the bottom right. Making sure it can't build anything down there. And Parting is following suit, getting a third of his own. He knows he has to keep up with these expansions, but at the same time, he, you know, he can't afford it. Although, you know what? Killer didn't punish him for taking his second base. And, uh, you know, he had a 15-20 supply lead. And as you get up in supply, 15-20 supply lead becomes less and less of a big deal. But what Killer does right now is he's getting double upgrades. His opponent can't afford that just yet. They have roughly the same probe count by now. And uh, with the third base for parting being built, he will be able to catch up to Killer's economy. But he won't be able to catch up on upgrades. We already have the charge upgrade halfway done for Killer. Parting is starting in charge for his units as well. But in terms of the upgrades, Killer is just ahead right now. Yeah. Parting though, getting the Templar Archive. And as I said earlier, Killer needs to have that certain timing when he actually attacks, and that should be as soon as his army is maxed out at the Yeah, latest. well, I mean, he needs to actually attack at some point, because, I mean, it, like, like you're talking about, if, if he lets Parting just kind of follow him and doesn't actually attack him, then Parting can also do the same thing and kind of catch up. And, yeah, Parting now getting the Templar Archives before Killer, actually, so he's going to try and mix in some Archons into his army, uh, more than likely, which is going to be pretty good if Killer decides to go for a lot of Zealots. Those Archons can do pretty good damage against Zealots. Soak up damage from the Colossi as well. What I like though is that Killer actually added a second robotic. So he can go for the double Colossus now. He has uh, an yeah. upgrade in an uh, upgrade advantage or he will have. He's oh. blinking in and I think that might actually be a mistake. Trying to take out the Colossi is not successful at Whoa. that. But Parting is retreating now and so he should. We have the blue. Oh, oh. losing both of them. Beautiful blink by Killer. So well done. Blinks in, sees his chance, takes out the Colossi, and now Parting is in so much trouble. Parting is absolutely dead. There are so many Immortals in Colossi. GG coming from Parting, and Killer, he finally attacked, and he, that's all it took to win the game. Although, that was just a beautiful little snipe there, assassinating those Colossus as he tried to retreat. And the blink in the first time didn't really work very well, but because Parting got spooked and ran, uh, his Colossi were just, you know, out in the open, and that's all it took. Zero Colossus and one Immortal against four Immortals and four Colossus. Who's gonna win? And that was the person with all the big things. Yeah, that was really well done. I mean, he saw his chance, he saw the Colossus out of position, he just blinked behind them, took both of them out with one shot, and at the same time, he could already have uh, also have waited. He had 2-2 two, two coming up, he had double pro yeah. uh, Colossi production, and even if Party would have added some Archons, that would have made a difference at all with the Colossi count that we could have expected within the next two or three minutes. So Killer with a really good game. The early game yeah. was decisive in that match, and uh, I'm actually really... I'm psyched to see the next game. Parting against Killer yeah. and the next map will be Daybreak. Yeah, and that is why I mean, you know, we're talking about how it's kind of a volatile matchup. It all came back to a little bit of Miss Micro. Parting lost a few more Stalkers than Killer did in the, in the very beginning of the game, and that was all it took. That was the pebble being tossed down the mountain that caused the avalanche that ended up with uh, Parting buried at the bottom, and it all came down to just losing a few Stalkers in the beginning. It wasn't quite a build order loss or anything like that, but it's, uh, you know, a very small advantage can be turned into a large one later on, so yep. there you go. And this was also due to the higher amount of probes that he had. It's only like three drones, like four drones, uh, sorry, probes that you have a small yeah. advantage in terms of workers, but if you're able to squeeze out one or two additional stalkers, then you're just in such a good position as soon as the actual battle happens. So that was really well done by Killer, and you need to be really careful with that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to head into the next match. Daybreak will be the second map in this best of three. Parting against Killer here at the GSL.
There they are, both players facing off, parting the newcomer against Killer, the GSL veteran. Can the newcomer overtake him and claim his spot in Codes, or will Killer, the perennial Codes Protoss, regain his spot? We're gonna find out right now here at the GSL. <laughs> 